All right, guys. Um, so welcome, everyone. I'm glad that uh, you guys can make it out today. Um, today, I'm going to uh, I'm going to be giving you a resource that I'm sharing in the chat here. Um, and what I want to uh, really discuss is our plan, our marketing strategy, and um, how it fits into our strategic planning, and why we would be um, discussing it now. Okay, so if you're like most contractors, um, usually uh, we see a bit of a dip um, where we're really, really busy up till Christmas, all right? And then January, February, uh, things can possibly slow down. Um, what I like to do is actually start to plan to offset that. Um, so if you're really looking at your sales trend numbers and you're looking at um, your past historic numbers, you'll probably notice um, that there's certain parts of the year that aren't as busy as others, right? Early summer for some, um, you know, just after Christmas for others, maybe even January, February, March, all right? So um, let's not let that happen this year. Let's really look at um, planning out our marketing so that we can have additional work in those slower periods um, and looking at, you know, really implementing a strategy that we can actually measure and see the results of, all right? Now, <clears throat> I think what's important to mention here before I get going um, is um, all marketing, which I absolutely love, is 100% measurable, okay? So anything you're doing in terms of marketing your business, um, you should be using both leading and lagging indicators. So we're going to talk about that um, in one second here. I'm going to pull up my thing. Does anybody know what a leading indicator is? No? Lagging indicator, nobody ever heard that term? Something that's going to indicate that the I don't know, market's going to change or whatever? Mm, close. All right. So um, a leading indicator is something that essentially is, um, it, it anticipates the future performance, right? So like w when we're using a leading indicator, um, that can be, um, like website traffic, we can immediately see, you know, if we do this certain thing, like the web website traffic is picked up, we have more unique visitors, we have more page visits, um, we can immediately see, like our lead generation, we generated six leads. Okay. So those are, are um, relatively easy to track, all right, as well as conversion rates and stuff like that. Um, lagging indicators um, are essentially ones that um, qualify what we did. Okay. So lagging indicators could be things like um, um, cost to acquire a customer throughout a campaign. Um, what else can there be? Uh, return on your investment for marketing. Um, it can be, you know, how many sales were closed. All right. So it really is the, um, it's the indicator that we tend to want to focus on the most. Usually those lagging indicators, like I'm sure nobody here is thrilled to get a hundred leads. They'd rather have, you know, closed a uh, $100,000 worth of work, right? That's more of a an indicator that we would be more comfortable with. Um, but there's a there's a strong relationship with them um, in marketing. So we'll go through those first. And then we'll talk about the actual specific marketing campaigns that you can run. And then I've organized the marketing campaigns into ones that um, require no money, all the way up to ones that are, you know, that that do cost money. And I have ones for uh, B2B as well. Okay, so um, your your leading indicators again: lead generation, conversion rates, uh, social media engagement, like shares, stuff like that. Those will all be leading indicators. Um, ad performance, um, and again, we call this uh, PPC. All right, a click through rate, which nobody here will really necessarily be aware of. Um, that's uh, like how often your ad gets clicked on. All right. And then, you know, how long they've they've actually hit on that ad. The cost per lead, that's a very important um, indicator for everybody here. It's like, how much is it costing me to generate a lead? OK, and then our rate of conversion from ads. So, again, how many of those uh, those leads got converted into actual um, into actual projects? Um, some of our lagging indicators of referral traffic, that's another a, a good leading indicator. Um, customer feedback, uh, very important. Again, that can be both leading and lagging, um, believe it or not. 
Um, so the number of reviews that you've got, the average review rating, uh, the sentiment and feedback, um, very important that we're kind of watching those in our, in our system, we do track all that for you. All right. But I, I use that as a, as a key indicator in my business for, you know, seeing how well we're performing on delivery on our production side. All right. Now <clears throat> your lagging indicator, again, let's decide, like, let's, Let's put it into a scenario for a second, but our lagging indicator um, of a successful marketing campaign is going to be revenue growth, right? So if we were to start marketing now, chances are you may not um, actually see the revenue growth until I would say 90 days, you know, on average, we wouldn't start to see a noticeable difference. And that's just the kind of way that most marketing does work, um, you know, depending on budgets and stuff like that, right? Um, cost to acquire a customer. This is a very like this is one of my five key indicators that I that I uh, I look at very carefully. Um, is cost to acquire a customer? Is anybody here track any of that, or is anybody aware of those numbers? No. Yeah, of your leads. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, again, when you're when you're taking in and and calculating how much does my business. Like how much does it cost me to acquire a customer, right? So mine, for example, is $1,436 is my mm -hmm. expense, my cost to acquire one customer. Okay. With that information now, I know that with the market mix, the and we're going to talk about that because I use multiple marketing campaigns at once. The marketing mix that I'm mm -hmm. using generates a customer for about 1414 bucks. Now I'm always trying to beat that number. I'm always trying to refine and get it better and like move it down. I've, you know, I use that indicator um, for the overall health of my business. It's also the number that I'm using to, if I were to sell my business, all right, that's the number they're going to come in and look at very carefully as well. All right. So many businesses have a cost to acquire a customer that's higher than, you know, what they're going to get out of the, in terms of profit. That's not a really good model, is it? Right. So again, in my business, our average ticket price is about forty three thousand, um, and our cost to acquire that customer is like fourteen hundred bucks. I can do that and all day, right? My mine actually used to be, I think it was a dollar sixty five. Wow! So you didn't do any I, marketing? Well, yeah, I did. I ran one full page ad in my target market for four hundred ninety seven dollars a month. Wow! And uh, it's it's. It's been the bomb. So wow. but oh, it's all gonna it. change now. What's that? You still do it. Oh yeah, I still do it. I get lead I get 20 leads a week from it. Wow, that's crazy. That's like a like that's like a 20x return or hundred X return. Yeah. Keep it's doing huge. that if it's working. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Crazy. So but again, you know, if you're calculating that, that's an unbelievable number for for and that's very uncommon. That's very unheard of for to have it at that rate. But keep doing that if it's working. Um, for my service guides that are out there, oh, one of the oh. most important indicators that I look at in a service-based business. So I mean, electricians, plumbers, um, HVAC guys is lifetime value. Okay, super super important on the lifetime value of a customer um, because we're not necessarily making. Um, like our cost to acquire a customer isn't, isn't as pretty. All right. So to give you an example, we have a call out fee of 240 bucks for a customer. Um, you know, and it's just a simple service call, right. Where it covers under that, that, that you're not going to make much profit in that. And the cost to acquire that in terms of lead cost might cost you a hundred bucks. Right. So that's like a, like a two to one return, which is, not very scalable. Now, if we focused more on the lifetime value of that customer, meaning measuring how many repeat calls or referrals that we got from them, how many, um, like how, how big their ticket price became or how many repeat services we have, that's the, that's the lagging indicator that I'm, I'm really focused in on. And I already know to run, you know, just to kind of get yourself in the door, your average ticket price needs to be above $700 to move any vehicle to go see anybody. So over the, the you're not going to get all of them to that rate, but you know, most of them should be well over that. Um, you know, in the service side of things, you can get, especially electricians, HVAC guys, like four or $5,000 tickets out of those service calls as well, right? 
So a much better one to look at is that L, uh, LTV, and it's an indicator of other things too, right? So if you're getting a lot of customers that are repeat, um, you know, reoccurring revenues, stuff like that, that's a that's a sign of a good healthy business. Um, the customer retention rate, which kind of goes with L, LTV, um, very big indicator, especially if you're doing any sort of B two B business, okay? Um, and believe it or not, most companies I feel don't market properly for retention. Okay. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, but again, these are big time lagging indicators that are, are super important to keep our eyes on. Um, once you do have your marketing up and in place. So, and we'll be talking about how that system can actually track those. Steve Osh, I see you got your hand up. Yeah. How do you calculate, uh, your CAC? Yeah, so you take up all of your marketing expenses um, and you divide it by the number of new acquired customers. It's just simple. Like I spent $80,000 on Google Ads, $50,000 on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's 130 grand. So is it that simple? I spent 130 grand and I got 3 million bucks? That's exactly it. So then you divide that and that's your cost to acquire a customer, right? So again, depending on how how advanced your marketing is, but there are important things to keep in mind with the CAC, right? So like it, it could be misleading in some situations, all right? So like, again, take Patty's example, right? That's kind of an un, like, that's, un, that's really unheard of. If she's a buck 60 to acquire a customer, that's, that's very, so she may, she may also want to include her sales cost for that, right? So Again, there are situations where you would pull in and like for teams that are doing um, like door knocking, for example, all right, their cost to acquire a customer would be the sales commission included in the in the um, in the sales process, right? Because it's tied into your marketing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, but but like if you were more sophisticated, you look at it per channel. Yeah. Like it, oh yeah, yeah. You would you'd break this down in all different ways. There, like I use an overall CAC. For me, because that's I have five leading indicators. One of my biggest ones is the CAC. So, like, I I need to know how much it's costing me to acquire a customer, because then I can kind of look at sales and marketing, and drill down from there, right? So, like, if my CAC rises, then I know that you know something has shifted in my marketing or my sales department. So either my sales isn't closing efficiently enough, and conversion rates are are off, right? Um, or my marketing, something isn't firing properly there. So then I can reverse and go back down from there. But again, I use like the overall like f formula for, for CAC, right? I look at all of them and then we can, we can separate them from that point. Right. But if you're running five or six channels and especially with CAC, it's, it's difficult, right? Um, so again, because you got some marketing campaigns that can take six months do you, you know, tell you start to see a return. Some of them that are like, you know, turn around the next day, right? That makes sense. Okay. Any other questions so far in terms of lagging leading indicators? Okay. Um, and I, I hope that most of us are tracking like the number of closed sales. Um, anyone that's using our system, I mean, that it tracks it for you. It even uh, tracks the velocity. We're actually looking at that with Greg today, like sales velocity and stuff like that. But again, these are really, really important numbers to be um, aware of and have the systems in place if you're going to do any sort of marketing. Okay. I can't stress this enough. The fun thing about marketing is it's very data driven. Okay. It's one of the most data driven, um, you know, functions within your business. And it has, you know, the potential to, to, in my opinion, anyways, being a marketing guy, um, has the potential to grow the business the quickest, the most efficient, and it's the most profitable of all, all the functions. Some may argue it's sales, but I disagree. Um, but it with that said, it can also go in reverse, right? So lots of marketing campaigns can be failing and we continue to use them with a failing number, right? At a certain point, we need to be aware of these, especially if we have agencies or anybody else doing work for us, um, we need to hold them accountable to the numbers, right? Lots of agencies don't take accountability for their numbers. And they tell you things like, you just gotta wait 12 months for SEO to work, okay? There's a big problem with that, right? It's how do I know that you're even doing anything, 
right? What do I know that you're do that we shouldn't be making those blind investments without knowing? Um, my opinion, what we'll be talking about today is like all every company that's doing under three to four million dollars should only be focused on direct response marketing. That's it. Nothing else. No brand marketing. No, I I would even take SEO off the table to be perfectly honest with you. I think it's, you know, again, I think if you have surplus in your budget and you want to take a risk and you want to, you know, experiment 20% of your budget could be towards that, but don't, um, don't, don't bet the house on it because you'll be sadly disappointed. Um, what else was there? Okay. So, um, is anybody know the difference between a brand marketing and direct response marketing? Anybody aware of what those two types of marketing are? No. Okay. So, is brand like I do a lot of rot repair. So okay. I do, I have a lot of that in my ads versus a generic something. I have my generic stuff in there too, but is that what you mean? So let me give you an example. So Coca-Cola does what we call brand marketing. They they put out commercials just so people see their name, right? They sponsor, you know, benches at the hockey arena. Like they like they are putting their name on everything, but they have $3 billion a year to invest in that type of marketing. No one here has $3 billion to invest in their marketing. And the thing with brand marketing, it's very hard to track, okay? And it's mostly ineffective. Okay. So how many of you guys have, you know, sponsored a hockey team? Oh, okay. I I've, I've sponsored, yeah. I sponsored playing. You, you don't get very much return on that. All right. No. That's, that's a, that's a generally a big loss. Okay. Um, you know, same thing with, you know, sponsoring a thing at the, but that's a perfect example of brand marketing. And there's a lot of companies that are selling brand marketing you know, oh, we'll put your name on here or, you know, we'll put your name there. And it mostly is ineffective. Okay. I I want everyone here to really think about direct response marketing. So how many of you guys remember getting um, like packages in the mail where they would like try and sell you stuff? Anybody remember those days? I mean, it still happens, right? We all get junk mail, right? Like the CDs for a penny? Y you got it. That's a perfect example. Okay. All right. So that's where direct response marketing has its origins is actually in, in mail marketing, direct mail. Okay. Um, direct mail, believe it or not, in some markets is still highly effective. Um, people still, you know, still open it. You still generate leads. Nothing like it was in its heyday, but I mean, it's still a form of direct response marketing, meaning that every single piece of marketing that was sent out could be tracked. How many pieces were sent out? 5,000. How many would do we get returned? And it and it was designed to get people to immediately do something, okay, to immediately take action. It was designed to specifically call out somebody to that require or that was interested in the service, okay? So it, in that in that respect, you could track how effective your marketing campaign was and every dollar could be accounted for. Every nickel could be accounted for on where it went. And then you can play the game of odds. Okay. So in my world, in my, in my brain, um, my business has really become a point of, of investment. All right. I want to reduce the amount of risk. So meaning for every dollar I'm putting out, I want to have a safeguard of knowing I'm going to get back X, Y, and Z. Right. So let's say in marketing, I'm looking at putting out a dollar and in 90 days, I've proven that it will return $4 to me every single time, right? Provided that I do this, this marketing, this marketing, this marketing, this marketing, right? Now, um, again, as you get better and better at tracking and seeing the results of your marketing, it allows you to um, take more, better calculated risks, all right? So I'll give you a really good example of, of how this can, can work out. Um, when I first started my business, um, I started by literally going around collecting addresses of people that needed a roof and then coming back, searching all those addresses, putting like getting their their uh, names from the reverse search thing, which you could do back in the day, right individually, and then printing them off on little stick it notes and then like actually mailing them a piece of mail, right with a stamp and everything. Um, and people were like really laughing at me because they were like, well, you could just send it through, you know, postal service, but there was a problem with that. 
is it wasn't a self it's like it didn't look like an actual like piece of mail so people wouldn't read them they just throw them out my return on the first ones that we did i got like a six to one return all right we generated like you know two or three hundred thousand dollars in business from from the first run and i could repeat it i could keep doing it so it was worth it all right now if you talk to any other marketer they would have said i'm crazy for doing all that manual work right but by doing that i actually was able to you know generate quite a bit now would I do it now? No, I would probably hire a service. But that's a very good example of direct response marketing. Now, there was two indicators that I was looking at, first and foremost, which you would know right away, like how many leads got generated. I sent out 5,000 envelopes. You know, we generated 366 leads, right? That's a lot for, for, for a campaign like that. That's actually unheard of for that amount of mail. It's usually less than 1% of your direct mail will get that's a that's seen as a really good number that means your piece was really good i got a much higher rate than that right and then i looked at my conversion rate on that mail was much higher because people literally thought it and it was it was a folded up licked envelope like i put in work to actually send out that piece of mail and it was a sincere letter it looked you know legit i signed everyone with a pen like you know and again if i had to look back i'm like well that's you know, I could get better returns other places, right? But at the time, again, you're not getting a better return than that. I'm a 16, 17 year old kid, you know, out selling roofs. No one's generating 377 leads off a, a direct mail campaign, unless you had something that was unique, right? So um, there are situations, again, even in your social media, if you've got anyone generating social media, great. We have someone doing our social media. All right. What's how do we measure whether our social media is actually returning us a, 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 like a return on our investment? How do we do that? With simple. your CRM. You, you, track the, <laughs> you track the number of conversations and leads. As simple as that, right? Like if I, if I invested $1,500 in designing this content, all right, and not all content is, is designed to actually be called to action. Some of it's done in brand marketing form, right? So like, again, it's meant to create awareness and, you know, general um, awareness of your company. And again, it's for the most part, it's pretty cheap to do there. All right. But there should always be a percentage of that. That's a call to action. Like, you know, we want to, we want this to be generating leads. And it amazes me that most people don't actually have it directed that way. They don't, they don't ever ask for business on their social media platforms. So, you know, it, it kind of gets me scratching my head. Like what, what's the point? <laughs> People are like, like, what do you offer? What do you do? Right? So again, th yes, you can directly measure that and the effectiveness of that campaign, right? Let's take another example, um, paid leads or paid, uh, paid advertisement. Um, let's say a Google leads campaign. All right, very simple direct response it's designed like you're not running ads to say hello right nobody's doing that no one's just doing it to try and be um like instagram famous or anything no right so all of that can be direct directly accounted for okay and what we're going to talk about today um with each one of these ones and way i want you to think about it is find the ones in this list that are the easiest to track all right. And I'm going to give you my 101 proven strategies for marketing. All right. And we're going to start with the ones that cost no money. Okay. The ones that are the most overlooked, underutilized ones. And the very first one, optimize the Google My Business profile. Everybody can do this right now. All right. And let me explain to you why. All right. So recently we discovered that Google has changed their algorithm. Like it'd be six weeks ago now. All right. They did a big update. And what that update was designed to do was to favor local business. OK, um, because they've been having so many problems with um, like agencies and stuff coming in and buying up their leads, running up the lead cost and then reselling the leads to, you know, contractors, for example. So they'll come in and buy one lead from Google and then sell it to six different people. Right. Um, Angie's list does that. Angie's list is a perfect example. Like they do that kind of business. So Google said, said, you know what? F you, what we'll do um, is we'll favor the local people. So people that are on Google maps, registered business, we're going to give them favor over it. All right. Now the gamified part of it is Google is also trying to 
um, make sure that people keep coming back to Google. All right. It's always about Google. So the key to this is when we're updating and optimizing our Google um, profile, we need to be ma uh, making sure that we're getting reviews. Okay. So as many customers as you can reviewing you on that platform, if you can Google guaranteed huge, right? Big benefit. And then that we're doing actual social media type posts on the platform in Google, my business. Most people don't know that if you're working with us, we do those posts for you. Um, and then any reviews you get, you respond within 24 hours to, if you just do those things, you're going to become much higher, much higher ranked on Google maps. And then the other place that you want to, um, if you're, if you want to take it one step further, further, um, is like the Alexa and the Siri get registered for those. I have SOPs for them. Everyone should be registered. The reason why, and I'll explain it is those search, those are search engines. So Alexa and Siri both use a search engine. Okay. Unless you register on that search engine, um, you won't come up and think about how many people use Siri and use Alexa to find a local contract. Alexa, find me a local painter. Find me a painter near me. The, people don't realize that those are their own search engines. Um, Apple, same thing. You can register with them and, and show up in Apple Maps. Those are quick, easy, zero cost wins. Just get registered with them. And then optimizing your Google My Business profile. Make sure that it's it's visible, that it's up there. It has recent posts, recent pictures, all right? Um, and your posts, again, you can use the same social media content to post on it. All you have to do is a, a, like, we've been posting three times a week for most of our clients or th three different posts. And we, we share about five photos and that's been just keeping us at the top of the, of the Google, like local area searches, right? Simple, easy play there. Okay. Um, Yelp, um, especially for my United States friends, uh, Yelp again, it's another search engine, but it's highly connected with uh, with Google for, for SEO. But a lot of people use Yelp still to check out for contractors, right? That search volumes are still incredibly high, okay? Um, this is stupidly simple, but um, in social media, the most highest performing at, like uh, post and easiest ones to produce are before and after photos. Just of your jobs, just before and after, that's it. Google, same thing. If you can just use those across the board, and we've tracked, you know, a couple hundred different accounts, um, before and afters are that by far the highest reaching and the highest converting um, social media content that you can you can post. Okay, um, local uh, community groups on Facebook. Does anybody use Facebook groups at all to uh, be an expert or to respond to? Anybody using their local community groups? You do, Patty? I do. Yep, I do. Okay. You would be unbelievably amazed. Your entire audience is actually, you know, again, for a lot of us, our entire audience is there. Um, I have a I have a client we used to work with um, that was a plumber, and he does about, well, now he's probably over a million dollars, but at the time he was doing about seven fifty, eight hundred thousand, and he only did one community group, one local community group, and he gave a tip every week with a short video. That's all he needed. And he was busy all the time. That that was his only form of marketing, and it worked very, very well. Um, I can tell you myself, owning a, a, a Facebook group, very, very effective for generating leads, right, F to contractors. Go where your audience is, all right? Everybody's on Facebook. Um, it's a community-based platform, all right? When you're trying to sell the community, what's important is that you lead with value, all right? You don't lead with solicitation, okay? So... When we go into these groups, you want to make sure that you begin to offer value. All right. So instead of being like, Hey, I'm a plumber. I need work. Be like, Hey, I'm a plumber. And I'd like to give you a tip. All right. I'd like to make a suggestion. I'd like to, you know, give you three ways to clean out a trap. Like all of those kind of things will lead to people naturally just wanting you to do it. Okay. Same thing with general contractors. Um, it's always good to be active in your community groups as well. Think of it again as an as a community forum, super powerful um, for people in the community and that are going to do the most um, recommending of you. Um, so you would be amazed how many referrals I get from community groups, and I'm just like, oh, okay, that's great. Cool. Um, we get we get tagged on them all the time. All right. Um, 
Well, your pastified ads, them. like your next door and stuff. I mean, it's it's free, right? So yeah, go ahead. A uh, question for you about the community groups, right? So mm -hmm. like, um, like I know there's homeowners in a uh, local suburb. Yep. So what what do you do? So you, you go into the community group and what do you say? Be like, hey, we just finished this project or I'm Okay, sure so first of all, what you do, okay. Well, I'll just show you. So like what I would do first, let's look for like Georgina. I got some of them in here. Is you find people that have asked questions about the thing that you're doing, right? And you answer them, even if it's late, you can answer those questions and be active. All right. But the other thing is, is you can offer a tip. So like take what you do, for example. All right. What's What's the one thing you wish every customer knew before they bought a um, a new driveway? I think the biggest thing is people complain that the the polymeric sand washes out. Okay. And the weeds start growing through the pavers. Okay. And they just so, what's don't the, know. so what's the solution for it? <laughs> it's just before wash, just just uh, add more sand. Okay. And just reapply sand. Uh, Perfect. Yeah. So your post would look like, hey, homeowners, how many of you guys have a, you know, uh, interlock driveway? I just wanted to give you a tip on, you know, how to maintain it. You would add sand when you're power washing it. Maybe you do shoot a video of it being done. So what that does is essentially, again, to everybody else, you've given value, but anybody looking for that service now immediately sees you as an expert in it and you're there giving out something for free and providing value to the community. People are going to be very responsive to that. All right. Now it's going to take a couple of times. It's going to take a little bit of work for you to, you know, be seen as, as a trusted source there, but it doesn't take much because not many people go there with the intent of just genuinely giving out advice. All right. And if you have something to offer, again, it's very easy to build a network there where people are going to recommend you because then anytime anyone asks anything and you'll get linked to other pages, you'll get linked like just referrals because they've seen the post there, right? Even if they don't need a driveway, but their sister down the road does. Oh, I know this guy. They can trust you. They've seen your face. They've You've been giving tips. Like it's a way to build your brand. And like, again, if I'm looking at a community group, like take this one, for example, this one's where I live in Georgina. Okay, there's 18,000 members, all right? And just look at the form, right? So like people are coming there asking for services, right? If I search this group, all right? And I was like, let's just say roofers. Oh. I'm gonna have too many because it's roofers. I should have chose something else, but. Yeah, looking for a reputable roofer, right? Just go through it, right? Need a roofer quotes on any company. Like these are all posts of people looking for those services, right? Right, a second story needed Christmas lights. So people are there, your audience is there, all right? Yeah, and yeah, I got that. The, key, the key to it is, is not to come in and be seen as like just a marketer or a solicitor because they'll they, like, they don't value that. like. You've got to come in and offer something, right? So even being in part of your community, um, you know, maybe you've done a, you, you've helped out the local go girl guides fucking organization. You would post your post there, right? You'd let the community know, all right? And inadvertently, you're you're getting yourself exposure to the to the exact people who are going to buy your services, right? Um, reviews. Could also, and could you also get like uh, clients to post? Oh, for sure. Like, like, for example, say I do a job, like one of my clients, we did a job. Mm -hmm. Could I like pay them to post a video testimonial? Um, yeah. That's so that's very salesy, but yeah. So again, it, without context, like if that person's not really involved, it will be like, it'll probably be flagged by the minute, like the, the moderators, like I said, the easiest way, like it can be just simple, like. Like take your lead magnets, take any of those kind of things that you offer. You could just throw those in there every once in a while and be and be active. Like just answer people's questions. Like go in with with lower intent. Like don't be salesy, right? And you you will see a huge like return on that, right? And again, for somebody that's just starting out, somebody that's you know just building their business and their reputation, 
this is as solid as it comes. Like again, when we look at ROI, it's 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 good, but there is a lag time. You know, I mean, that's not going to be an immediate sort of return. All right. Um, that's going to be something you're going to build on for three, four weeks, possibly before you see a, a lead or somebody recommending you. Okay. Got a question, Jay. So sure. we're, let's just say there's some local groups. Yeah. Um, are you, are you, it'd probably be a good idea just to search for electrician for my example and just mm -hmm. see, see who else is on there Yeah. and what they're posting. Yeah. So like, again, you will Start find with that and just sort of feel it out and get, see what kind of activities on there and just, yeah. yeah. Looking for an electrician, right? So like, again, these are regular, like consistent posts. So yeah. what you want to do and, and back to your question, uh, Siavash is that the people that are regularly posting in here, like the ones that are like active in the, in these Facebook groups, I always call them like the gatekeepers, right? Like they're like the, you know, the people that are like super, like they're involved, they, you know, they're community people, right? Um, if you can get one of them and, and, you know, you get one of them after they've used your service to say good things about you in these places, that's gold, right? It's just like, it's like digital door knocking. You know what I mean? Like this is a way you create influence mm -hmm. in the community is again, you create value first, right? You don't want to be seen as the guy just selling and pushing, um, you know, electrical services without, without ever adding anything to the community. Right. Mm -hmm. So again, how hard is it to take some of your social media posts, like for yours, for example, Greg, and I think we, we were doing this at one point for you, but um, taking some of those social media posts that we have where they're tips and tricks and things like that, and just dropping them in there. People are like, okay, okay well, you're not asking for anything. You're just, you know, you're warning people about their, their electrical safety. So for us to facilitate that now would be to, try to get some local groups, then we can That's it. add them into the plan. Okay. Well, and then we can connect with yeah. them on the system yeah. too, so that your post okay. just goes out to them. Right. Okay. We'll do a little research and check yeah. that out. So everybody has those local groups and they're a great source of, of like decent leads. What, what you will find though, is that again, with lagging leading indicators, all right, is the first ones are going to be the hardest ones to get. All right. Followed by like a wave of much easier ones that are just kind of when anybody puts makes a recommendation or anyone has a question, you'll get recommended automatically. Right. So those are good places to be active. And and again, it's it's digital, um, fast, direct, direct response. And I do recommend them. OK, um, blog posts are still um, another great way to do it. So again, um, if you wanted to combine those two, I don't know if anybody here has written blogs as of recently, or anybody does blogs at all. No. Okay. So um, with blog posts, uh, what I like to do is basically take your social media and because we have ChatGPT, you can create short posts, like tips, tricks, whatever, post those blogs into the social media channels, into the communities, into things like that. All right. And what that's going to do is help to drive up your organic, your organic search ranks. Okay. It's also, again, highly valuable, um, a great way to kind of get your name out there by adding value. Um, and it's going to help your SEO, of course. Right. But we can do this all ourselves. We don't need to hire a before you'd have to hire a copywriter or whatever. No, you just chat GBT now. We can we can create those blogs pretty quickly. Our system allows you to post blogs, no problem. Um, we have a place for them. Um, for most of our clients, we post them um, regularly. And again, you're gonna build backlinks and you're gonna build um, you know a lot more um, SEO leverage that way as well, okay? Um, back to this uh, hosting a webinar or a free home thing. Again, I would use that, stack that, right? So you would get the audience from the community, right? Those community forums, those community pages. Maybe you wanted to do, you know, a, a webinar on a, a outdoor lighting, okay? Well, again, I would go to those community pages, create an event, let them know that you're inviting all the local homeowners that are interested in outdoor lighting, all right? And you're going to invite them to that webinar type um, training, like sort of like what we're doing here, right? Highly effective, especially for that, that style of, of business. 
And again, zero dollars. It's going to take you time, right? But we're not talking about huge capital expense, right? We're not talking about, you know, massive commitment overall, okay? Um, and again, uh, local participate in local community events and fairs. I bet you most of you don't realize, but um, the local community events and fairs, most of them are free to attend. They're, they're looking for people to be in those events and you can go, I mean, we had the Sutton Fair this year. We had a booth at, um, and literally we just, we were doing recruiting. We weren't even looking for business, but we ended up getting like 25, 30 leads from it. But we were there to recruit. That's a right? good idea. Younger, younger crowd. We went there for basically a job hiring fair, and we still pulled 30 leads out of it. So great place to, again, be involved in the community and very, very cheap. You know, if it costs you anything at all, I think, you know, one year it was like 50 bucks for, for an entry. This year they gave it to us for free just to show up because people aren't doing them as often, right? Especially since COVID. So um, your offers too. So offering a free inspection or consultation. Again, those platforms that we're talking about, right? Community groups. Um, if you build your own Facebook group to your own Facebook community, if you're keeping them active, right? What are we going to offer? You know, what, what's, what is our offer after we've done a blog post on the five tips for, you know, how to not let your house burn down, right? Five tips on electrical safety. We may make a, an, an offer to that of a, a free inspection or consultation, phone consultation, right? People love free in those groups, by the way, free gets a lot of attention, not necessarily what I would always recommend, but in some situations, not, not a bad idea. Okay. Depending on the on the approach and on the marketing. Okay. Um, how many of you guys are in the local business networks or exchange referrals? Johnny, you were in one for a while, too, weren't you? BMI or whatever? Uh, yeah, we were in the, um, uh, yeah, BNI, business networking international. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it was good. There were some, definite leads that come out of it and ways to get connected to people that you don't normally connect with. So mm -hmm. um, building on your, your network's network. Um, right. There were a few challenges with it as well, but it's time consuming, right? It is. That was the biggest part of it. So, yeah. Yeah, totally. So, I mean, again, you know, you, even your local chamber of commerce, um, they have events, they have, you know, things that aren't as, as intense as BMI, I know BMI is very intense um, and they expect a lot, right? So, but your local chamber of commerce has events, has things, ways for companies to be involved and they're dying for these things. So you can see the theme here, right? If I'm starting a business or if I'm trying to grow my business, you know, adding these things in, um, you know, isn't going to, isn't going to, isn't going to hurt you in any sort of way, right? And again, relatively low cost. It does require time, but I mean, it's it. You can pick and choose kind of through which one makes most sense. Yeah, and, and I'd say like for us in that particular one, because we were B two B, it wasn't as effective. There a lot of uh, residential guys that were in there. They totally. did a lot more, lot more business than what we did because there's a lot more with people within that network, right? Looking for those uh, opportunities. So. Yeah, yeah, I know for sure, for sure. So um, now let's talk about stacking campaigns, okay? So the cool thing about everything that I'm showing you here is they're all stackable, okay? And what I mean by stackable is let's take one single piece of content, all right? Let's say that we're, you know, we've come up with the blog idea, the webinar idea, the post idea, whatever, okay? Um, it's not much more difficult to shoot a quick video for it, right? It's not much difficult to do a training in one of these community groups, record it, all right, and then post it to your YouTube, okay? YouTube is still, like YouTube and Google are the biggest search engines in the world, okay? So, and they allow you to post things there for free, videos, all, the, all that kind of content. Um, and if you want your SEO ranking to go up, you definitely wanna be building YouTube videos. How many of you guys know that your YouTube videos will show up before any of your SEO will? Did you guys know that? Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. So again, a way to fast track your, your SEO and what, what we do 
is you create content for all the platforms, right? It's the same piece of content. It's the same tips, tricks, whatever, but you can repurpose it across all these platforms and it's free, right? It doesn't cost you anything to create a, um, a YouTube video on how to, all right? You take that same YouTube video and you post it in the community as a, as a piece of value. You then use ChatGPT to create a blog, all right? That then creates 10 posts from it, okay? We can post all of that within the CRM that we've got for you guys. Like we have all those channels where you can just create all those posts and just send them out. The community, like you can do all that in one piece of content. All right. So think of the power of that, especially if we don't want to spend a lot of money or we want to see better returns on our paid advertising. And this is what I mean by stacking. OK, so when I stack campaigns, so I take some of these campaigns. All right. I I figure out what it's going to cost me in time. All right. Time, energy, all those things. But I know that my real outcome is I want better return on my paid advertising. All right. Or I want better return. Even if these campaigns that I'm running, all right, I get 25 leads back from. All right. Do you think that I'm now more like people are more brand aware of me in the market? So, you know, maybe a friend told them, maybe, you know, a friend from school had told them about us and then they go and Google search us, right? Hit one of our ads. Do you think that that's driving traffic? Of course it is. Right. So by stacking these campaigns and again, being present in these, these forms and being present on these things, you're going to lower the cost that, that it is to acquire a customer. All right. So that you can actually spend more on ads. So again, if you're doing these and this is offsetting 30, you know, 30 opportunities. Okay. Your CAC is going to come down. Right. So meaning that now my, I, I can actually afford to spend more on all the other campaigns that cost a bit more, but have more of a direct response to it, all right? So like, you'll notice that these things have, you know, two to four weeks, four to eight weeks, like they're, they're investments, okay? But if we're just running paid ads, all right, that can get very expensive. And then we don't have the brand awareness and we're being compared a lot on price, all right? If we can get other touch points by stacking our campaigns, your other ads and your other like paid uh, things will perform a hell of a lot better especially in social media. I can't tell you how much better they'll do. Like not having organic content and trying to run ads in social media, not a good idea. Okay. For All right. YouTube, um, yeah. For the YouTube ad. Yeah. For someone who's never done that before, mm -hmm. are you talking about just doing something like with a selfie stick? Or are you talking about someone videotaping you doing stuff so here's like, here's what, the thing how, how how do you start to learn to do that you you don't because it's not worth your time um okay. but i'll tell you i'll tell you what you do okay you take your content all right mm -hmm. um let's say you've got the five tips on you know electrical safety okay mm -hmm. we create a faceless video with ai all right mm -hmm. that gives those five tips all right mm -hmm. maybe you show your face at the beginning or whatever but you can do like a B, what we call b-roll so it's a content, it's a type of content, okay? Mm -hmm. And even the videos that we have for you now do that, right? So then we post those as well to YouTube channels, mm -hmm. all right, that get other views, brings in other types of traffic. Now, what most people don't understand about YouTube, it's, I think it's the most slept on like platform of them all, both paid and organic, okay? Um, number one is people are there with the intent of what? Why do people go to YouTube? Think about why you go to YouTube. Sometimes you're searching for a problem, trying to find a solution, how to trying answer to, your boat. Trying to solve a problem, right? So yeah. would you say that that's a better client than the guy that's on TikTok or on Instagram that is there to entertain themselves? That's more fluff, definitely. Right. So, and it's also the, it's the second largest search engine in the world, right? Mm -hmm. So again, putting your content there, putting like creating a video like that, for example, and then optimizing it is far better approach than than anything else you're going to do. And now, like I said, Google's favoring those local experts. How do you be, mm. be seen as a local expert? You start mm. producing content that the local community is viewing, right? So again, the, your, you know, your steps are, like I said, you would use a YouTube video, but then you would share that 
as a, you know, as, as a piece of content into those community groups. If you're running paid ads, here's another like Trojan horse move. Um, you could take your, your video, all right. And you can put it in a community group. Anybody that watches that you can now retarget them. All right. Do you think anyone would just watch a video on electrical safety if they didn't possibly own a house? Like, so, would it be just your tire kickers doing that? So, so what you're saying is if we take a YouTube video, mm -hmm. do a quick little YouTube video, okay. Yep. Uh, upgrade your curb repeal. Yep. Or, or uh, install a pony panel. Yep. Uh, knob and tube wiring, switch it out. Right. Uh, quick little YouTube video, boom, right? You go into a, you go into a local neighborhood where there's all their houses. Mm -hmm. You stick that YouTube video there, right? Hey, mm -hmm. if you're wondering about knob and tube and you want to switch it out, here's a quick little video. Now they're pixeled is what you're saying. Correct. And then you can run Google and uh, meta pixels. Exactly. And you're running them at a lower cost because it's the organic traffic that's, that's they're hitting on. Right. And they favor organic traffic. Like they're going to always favor organic content and especially the way the algorithms are going now favoring local searches. So Dude. again, if you're, if you're picking up your traffic and pixeling that way, your, your cost per lead is going to be way, way down. You're saying, right? you're saying, you're saying the cost of uh, retargeting is cheaper on organic traffic. Way cheaper. It's they like, it's, between... it's almost nothing. Right. So, and, and again, it's um, like, think about the audience, right? Like a community audience or like a homeowners association audience, for example, right. How many, like go to Ottawa and find out how many homeowners associations are join their community group. All of them have them, all of them. Right. And then drop your YouTube video in there and like... just retarget them. Like right now, we're like we ripped out an asphalt driveway. Yeah, uh, and we're installing retaining walls along the front, so we're just mm -hmm. upgrading this guy's like front yard. So I went in there and I shot a quick video on my phone, horizontal landscape. Yeah, right. And then I'm gonna shoot another one where we're paving, we're installing the retaining walls, and then maybe one at the end. And if I smooth talk the customer, maybe I get a video testimonial. Yeah, that's perfect. So, hey, right, boom. So then I'll I'll send it off to my editor, hundred fifty dollars yep. there. I get an edited video. Mm -hmm. SEO the title, stick it on YouTube. Yep. Now you got a piece of content, blog post across the board. Right. And then post across communities. Be like, hey guys, if you have an older home and you're looking to upgrade the bingo. Uh, we feel here. You can some quick ideas. So so you can build like again, you can build when you're building content, you build like 10 your five pillars or whatever, like the type of content, your before and after, your testimonials. Like if you're if you're even producing one of those a month, like you're going to, you're going to crush it like organically. And I'll tell you my cost per acquired customer is like peanuts compared to my competitors because of my organic content. Cause it's not, it's a combination of both, right? It's not just probably, one or the other. You're probably able to charge a lot more too. Totally. No, absolutely. It's a, it's a it, double whammy, right? Correct. And again, you're building, you're building awareness in, in, a lasting way, right? YouTube's forever. Anything you post there, anything that's there, like it stays there. It's got the longevity, right? So like, again, and they want to send trap, like they want to send their audience to local experts now, right? Where that, that is the biggest change in the algorithm that I've seen, like that's really in favor of contractors in a, like forever period, just full stop. Because now what it means is it instead of, of instead of a consumer or instead of like a big brand or a box store creating like, you know, the same content, how to like, and professionally producing it, they're going to go, well, if, you know, see if Osh is there and he's made videos, we're going to send all the traffic locally looking for that problem. We're going to send it to that local expert. And that's a big, big shift from what they were doing. Right. Because before like it was, it was the guys paying huge money to like, you know, basically dominate. And now they've said the hell with that. Um, and they're favoring this more local approach, which, and you're seeing the same changes happening in Facebook and all of them. They're saying the local business area, like, cause they know, like if they give it all to the big brands, like they're going to lose their consumer, right? They're going to lose their, their, they're just going to lose the audience as well. Right? Like no one wants to be solicited by all the big brands. So again, there's a big shift happening and this is why this, like this content making and where you're posting and what, why you're posting is becoming so much more important.
right? And it, and again, like I said, I seen costs of my ads drop down dramatically. And I could even say it from contractor AI, like we, you know, we, we pay like four bucks a lead for everybody into the Facebook group. If I wanted to directly market to those people, it'd be like 50 to 75. So like it tells you right there, you know what I mean? Make sense? That makes a lot of sense. Okay. So, and, and there's other things too, right? Like there's a whole bunch of other things that if we, if you just pick three or four of these things that make sense to you, I don't want you to try and do all of them. Okay. Don't try and do them all. You got to get good at one or two things, but put them in your schedule, right? We're going to make one piece of content. You can hit 22 of these strategies with one piece of content. One piece. Okay. It can be repurposed, restru like restructured. It can be reused. And again, just put it out there, right? Like no, no CTA, like true value. All right. Um, you can have a soft CTA in it if you, if you need be, but create that first piece of content. Um, and we're going to talk next week about um, uh, copyright frameworks. So how to write this and how to get chat GPT to create it for you. Okay. So I hope everyone got a little bit of value. We're going to be adding on to this conversation next week. So I hope everyone got some value from today and uh, we'll talk soon. Uh, Jay, just quick one. That first document that you shared, the, the lead and lag indicators, is that? Yeah. You want that? Yeah. yeah, I'll share it with Please. you right now. Yeah, can we get a, like, where can, are you going to post this video? Yeah, I'm going to, I always post them. On YouTube or is it in the school or where, where can we Yeah, find? I post it, I post it in YouTube. Yeah. And on school. So I, at the end of this call, I'll, I'll post it with all the resources as well. That's awesome. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right, guys. Talk soon. Thanks, Jake.